Welcome to The Mortgage Voice with Jeff Barton, your voice in the mortgage industry. Each week on this program, Jeff and his guests share their expertise, personal anecdotes, and the latest industry news to keep you in the loop. Now to provide you with insight and help you navigate the consistently changing world of real estate lending, here is your host for The Mortgage Voice, Jeff Barton. Welcome, everybody. I am Jeff Barton, your voice in the mortgage industry, 888-713-2929. That's our telephone number. Thanks for listening to the show. We're on each and every week, and we're at KMET, KCAA. We're on the Roadrunner, although, although Daryl, I want to ask you a question about the Roadrunner. I went to the Roadrunner the other night. Yeah, and tried I think to... they've run off the road. They've... <laughs> <laughs> I, think okay. the, I think they're in the ditch. Okay, the side very of the road, good. Yeah. So the Roadrunner is right now uh, um, not around, but we're also up at K Tahoe. And Coyote I, one. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Roadrunner zero. Yeah, I understand. No, I saw that Acme um, the, commercial the anvil, many times. The, the anvil falling on the Roadrunner. Yeah. <laughs> exactly right. Anyway, this is the Mortgage Voice. I'm Jeff Barton. If you'd like to email the show, info at malibufunding.net. Malibu Funding is the sponsor for the show. I want to thank that group, those people for uh, putting the show on each and every week. We bring some information, things that I think are important for you to understand about what mortgages are, what they do, how they can help you, and how they can hurt you, and what you need to do in order to get one. Uh, real estate market is really tough. As everybody knows out there, price is going up, inventory is down. I want to just get to a couple of things about that in some of the news to use sections. Um, and also, I wanted to um, just talk something about what's going on with rents, both here locally in San Bernardino and Riverside, everybody in those areas, hello. As you know, we're broadcast Saturday and Sunday each week. And uh, I just always want to acknowledge our audiences there and up in Tahoe. Thanks very much for listening to the show. Um, we've got Fred and uh, we've got Daryl and we've got um, Bill over there at KMET. Yep, they're all good people, good station operators, and uh, we appreciate their support in trying to get what we have here, which is understanding of the mortgage market. Uh, so let's get right to it. Um, one of the things about uh, the mortgage market that uh, is important to understand is the availability of money in the marketplace when you buy a house and then how that investment turns into equity and how that's been happening in the last four or five years, maybe more like 10 years since 2010, since the mortgage uh, crisis. And I don't know what we call that. What, what, what do you think is the best term to describe 2008 to people now? Meltdown. Meltdown. Okay. So this the term meltdown seems to have galvanized a lot of uh, energy in terms of describing what happened in 2008. But we have a lot of people who are you know, 15 years old, 14 years old, who are now in that uh, group of people who are looking to buy homes who don't know what that was, who really weren't affected either because they didn't have anybody they know who was foreclosed upon or because their particular world wasn't rocked at all because they were in school, they were, you know, in grade school. Other people called it a correction, you know, because really that's what it was. It, it had gotten so out of control, right, with people yeah. borrowing 125% yeah. of, of home value, and it was just a, 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 a reckoning. It was a, it was a correction as far as I'm concerned. Okay, so let, let's call it any of those things, a correction, a meltdown. Um, I like to call it, um, I guess, either one of those terms or the happening or, you know, you know, like that movie, The Happening, right? And here it comes, another mortgage foreclosure. Guy in, in the background with a big sheet over his head taking your property. Well, that's kind of how it was, believe me. Uh, so if we've come from 2010 to today, 2018, let's call it eight years, and we've had nothing but increase in price in homes, uh, we became over, uh, I guess, um, if we were to describe everything from 2012 back to 2008 as underwater, uh, most properties since 2012 have been at least equal to what they owe or have been increasing in equity in the property. And I want to talk about that right now. The equity since 2012, 2018 now, six years, uh, anywhere from six and a half to uh, 8% in San Bernardino, Riverside, just depending on exactly where you live and the pocket you live in. Up in Tahoe, same thing, although that's that's got a bit more uh, uh, resort-filled 
Um, people more, um, it's a lot more like Vegas in terms of temporary housing, meaning that people will come in there for a season or people will come in there to vacation. So it's a little bit more, uh, I guess, uh, solid in terms of the valuations, but they too have seen tremendous growth in the equity within their homes. So I'm reading an article by Jan Swanson. We caught We quote Jan Swanson on the show all the time, and she works for Mortgage News Daily, the site that we go to for a lot of our information. And uh, Daryl, guess how much equity, um, or rather, let me let me stop that by just saying how much how many mortgages um, there are in the U.S. What is the total dollar dollar volume of mortgages in the U.S.? What do you think it is? Oh, uh, good heavens. Let's, let's say that... Uh, uh, Add up all the mortgages in two, the U.S. Two, two, uh, $2 trillion. $25.1 trillion. That is what the um, mortgages, if you added them all up together, that's what they are. And that's a so big number. So I got number. 10% of them. Yeah, exactly. When $2 trillion is a big number. But uh, we do about a, a trillion and a half to two and a half trillion mortgages each year, depending on the year, depending on whether it's a refi market, depending. But that's that's a big number. But $25.1 trillion worth of mortgages in the U.S. Now, if we're adding into that, or we're looking at that number, and we see that there is roughly uh, $10.1 trillion worth of mortgage debt, you can see that the equity in the home is, you know, $15 trillion, which is 57, 58, 60% of equity in all homes is, uh, is amazing. It's $15 trillion. And that number goes up every year. For instance, last year, 2017, that number went up to, uh, this is equity in your home, grew by fif- uh, $544 billion in the year. So it's an amazing number, and that is basically saying that last year alone in the U.S., equity in your home went up a quarter trillion, I mean a half a trillion dollars. That's amazing. You think about the amount of money that's in your home. You bought a home. You got a mortgage in 2012, and you are just looking at the equity in your home, and you're saying, wow, this is unbelievable. How long can this last? Is this a good thing? Are we going to crash? All of these questions are valid questions, but one of the things in Jan's article about uh, the equity in your homes also has to do about why this particular surge in prices is happening. And it's not happening because what we're we're not seeing this time around is people buying into the equity in order to take money out of the house every six months. If you remember in 2006, 7, and 8, we would get anywhere from 5 to 10% growth in equity per month, not per year, 6%, but per month. And so every six months, what would happen is somebody who bought a house on credit for no money down, with no documentation, saw the equity in that home grow by 10%, maybe by 25, 30% in six months. They just refinance and take the money out. That's what was driving the market at the time. It's not that way now. What's driving prices in the market now is a lack of inventory in the pocket, in the um Uh, in the area that we're talking about, which is obviously across the United States. Now, there are some pockets that haven't grown like that. But in San Bernardino, Riverside, and Tahoe, the areas where this radio, the radio stations that we broadcast on um, are in those particular areas, what we are seeing is a growth that is sustainable because of the fact that there's a lack of inventory. We have a need for 1 million houses a year based on the people getting out of college, the people getting jobs, all the millennials who stayed in their parents' basement during the down times are now trying to get out and buy a home. So in given that, we are now seeing that obviously a million people need a new home every year. Well, we're only building 800,000 homes, so that means a 200,000 homes short, and that's driving the demand. So that where what we're seeing is in the marketplace, in most places, let, let's take Las Vegas, for instance. You know, they only have, um, uh, most properties are sold within 11 days. And they only have an inventory of 1.2 months. That means that as soon as a property comes on the market, it's sold. So how is a market like Las Vegas, which is one of the hottest in the U.S., which is right next to San Bernardino Riverside and all the counties going up to 15? 
How is, a, how is a market like that or markets close by supposed to compete with the housing needs? They can't. That's why the price is going up. But that's also why the equity in your home is protected because it's not built on the fact that we're just puffing up prices and uh, flipping loans into the next loan, what we call loan churning, it's because there's a lack of inventory, and that's liable to stay for the next few years. Anyway, I'm Jeff Barton. I'm your voice in the mortgage industry. We'll be right back. You're listening to The Mortgage Voice with Jeff Barton. We'll be right back with more in just a moment. For more information on today's topic, email Jeff Barton at info at malibufunding.net. Now, back to The Mortgage Voice with your host, Jeff Barton. Welcome back, everybody. I'm Jeff Barton, your voice in the mortgage industry, 888-713-2929. That's a telephone number. If you pick up the phone and give us a call, you can talk about mortgages. Yes, that's what we do on the show. You know what? It is the spring buying season, and we're about ready to get very hot in all these areas that we broadcast the show, and I want to thank everybody for tuning in and listening each and every weekend. Um, Yeah, the market's hot. Uh, property values are going up, and the scarcity of new product is big. Uh, so you're going to have to tune in to try to figure out what the best way for you to get a mortgage. The mortgage is about the most important thing you can have when you do go out and shopping for a home. Reason is, is that if you go out and you don't have a pre-approval or you don't know what your finances are, chances of competing against somebody else who does is zero. So find a professional. You can always call us, 888-713-2929. I'm Jeff Barton, of course. Uh, you can go to Malibu Funding, who is the sponsor of this show. Their website is malibufunding.net, and they have about 35, 40 loan officers at their particular site. And you can absolutely choose one of them, or if you can't find somebody, we'll help you find somebody. Um, we do bring to the show some great people. And we haven't had uh, one of the vendors on the show uh, for a long time talking about insurance needs for the home. And, and when you get that estimation from uh, your loan officer, and you see the insurance down there as either fire or uh, title insurance or any number of products. Uh, So I thought I'd bring on an expert and I'm really uh, pleased to bring uh, Michael Navarre on the show. He's a farmer's insurance agent. Michael, how are you? I'm fantastic. Very good to be on your show, Jeff. Thank you very much for coming on. Okay, Uh, so just give us a quick quick rundown of you, your business, uh, what kind of insurance products that you um, uh, sell, and then I can ask you a few other questions about what goes on with homeowners and home buyers and mortgages and things like that in regards to insurance. Absolutely. So quickly, I'm Michael Navar. I run the insurance in Beverly Hills. I'm actually the only insurance company on Wilshire Boulevard in the heart of Beverly Hills next to the McLaren dealer. And as such, I try to be an insurance concierge. We are one-stop shop, cover a lot of insurance needs for personal and business. For uh, mortgages, I mean, Jeff, do you know anybody that can get a mortgage and actually not have insurance on it? Nope. Impossible. Yeah, pretty impossible. So uh, most of the time people are calling me to check off that box, um, which is fine, but there's so many other features to insurance. It helps to have a concierge so they know they're getting a lot of other things that's custom tailored to their situation, and that's what I do. I customize. Okay, great point. And because we have so many buyers out there in, in so many different situations, give us an example of somebody you might have helped recently who had something either unique or you know different that uh, you said, hey, look, we can help you with this, this, and this. So uh, last year I had a client that bought a uh, home in Bel Air, and he was so lucky to have our insurance um, to, to defeat the anxiety that he had when the fires came right up the hill right. there in Bel Air. He was saved. They evacuated him, and um, he had no idea if he was going to come back to a burnt multi-million dollar mansion or not. He was in a high fire risk area. Of course. Uh, he was a high income individual, so we helped him with a lot of things to custom tailor it, because in those situations, you can't get standard insurance. That's I'm right. a broker that gives you that, that high fire risk insurance, and he also needed an umbrella policy for uh, you know his own personal needs as being a high you know high income earner in case somebody is suing him. So yeah, let's talk Talk about uh, let's talk about a little fair insurance. Uh, what that is, how it does help, because most of the uh, people who listen to the show are in high risk fire zones: San Bernardino, Riverside, Lake Tahoe. So it's a uh, 
you need two policies when you're required to do the California Fair Plan. That is a wildfire risk policy. So if you have a fire in the home or it comes in the home from outside, that's the California Fair Plan. Uh, people can Google that and see that. You can't buy it direct. You need to use a broker in order to, to uh, make the arrangements for it. Um, it's simple, though. It doesn't include liability coverage, and it doesn't include very much personal property coverage and certainly other risks, things like, uh, you know, burst pipes or, you know, car collisions into the home. It's a random mini things. is your other wraparound policy, which is, you know, what is offered by us at Farmer, State Farm, all state, uh, your standard fire policy, your standard hazard policy is also required. So in the California Fair Plan territory, you need to have two policies. Now, do you give title insurance when somebody's getting a loan? And do, what do you know about that in terms of people who have had some experiences where title insurance saved them? My title reps are the people that handle that. So right. Farmers is not a title rep firm. So it, it definitely is required, again, a mortgage required insurance to, to secure uh, any potential lawsuits or that there's a title de- defect there. So I am, uh, you know, as a concierge, I just know the right sources to go to to help people out to, to get that solved. Right. These insurance needs that you have, obviously there are so many, and because anybody out there with a family knows exactly what I'm talking about, whether it be threats from uh, uh, weather-related, uh, fire-related, whether it be a slip and fall, somebody that, as you said, might drive into your house, which, by the way, happened to a property of mine that I owned out in Yucca Valley. So I do know that these things do happen. Give us an example of some very weird thing that might have happened that you really, uh, other than uh, what you already gave us a, an example of, which I really appreciate that fire story because uh, Daryl, who's the engineer here, uh, lives about, I don't know, 200 feet from one of the largest fires in California history. That, that just, was a Thomas fire. Yeah. It was the Thomas fire. But uh, can oh, you wow, give us yeah. an example of something else that uh, you, you may have in your quiver? Yeah, it's, this isn't overly odd, but it is so many of my clients have a second or third or fourth place that they're renting out for income. Right. So one of my guys had a tenant, and they had a gas dryer. The gas dryer had a default, and it caused a slope fire in that property. So and nothing that my tenant could do or, or his tenant, he filed a claim after the smoke damage came through the house, not an expensive home either. He got well over $100,000 within one month of filing that claim uh, because he got loss of income. The person had to move out for two months to repaint and and, and fix up from all the smoke damage. Um, And uh, to my mind, I was shocked at the amount of money we were able to give for such a simple uh, claim. However, the principle is we'll restore the house to its full reconstruction value. And... um, that's why he got six figures out of what started as a very simple, you know, default of a drying machine. Well, my own story with farmers is is very similar. I had an auto accident where a guy ran into me while I was showing a house probably, I don't know, eight weeks ago. And farmers was very quick and very, uh, just, they were just on it. And I was very impressed because I had been with some other large companies, uh, but this was the first time I, I came away from the experience thinking, hey, this this was a good thing. I really appreciated both the information and obviously everything getting paid for, and I didn't have to worry about the rental car. I didn't have to worry about you know anything to do with the, the repairs themselves. It was all handled through my insurance company. Give us your, your uh, feeling about farmers and, and the quickness of response. You just mentioned something, and... Uh, what, what you? But, yeah, Jeff, you probably know personal injury attorneys. And uh, yep. when I talk to the ones, uh, and one of the things I do is uh, talk to a lot of them. I'm uh, the chair of a group at the Beverly Hills Chamber of Commerce, the finance lawyer, accounting, insurance, and real estate group. And one of my attorney friends has named a bunch of other competing companies, which I'm not going to throw under the bus here. Right, of course. People might throw my company under the bus. <laughs> but when it comes to having to collect the money, from an insurance company to have to sue them, that is such a painful yep. process. And um, I, I, I help my clients in lawsuit related activities when they're trying to, when they're the victim, when they're trying to collect money from another insurance carrier. And it's, it's a nightmare on a car claim with an insurance company that's a no name or reputation for really cheap insurance. They won't restore the car to full new value. They're using uh, you know, non standard parts. Uh, non-OEM right. parts, and um, uh, 
you, you just really have to work closely with your insurance rep to make sure you're getting the stuff in your own policy so that you're going to get you know restored to, to full value. Now, if, if you don't have much money and need to custom tailor something so that it, it is really just meeting the financial objectives, we're good for that as well. We've got multiple insurance programs. Um, hey, uh, listen, for, we're, for and auto. we're up against the clock, but I want to give you an opportunity. Shout out your phone number to somebody out there who's listening and wants to get a hold of you right away. Uh, 310-672-7290. 310-672-7290. My email signature says Google Michael Navarre in Beverly Hills. Excellent. Hey, Michael, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. We didn't even get into a lot of the things I wanted to because the interesting part of insurance is that it covers so much. And uh, I appreciate you coming on the show. Appreciate you, Jeff. Thank you, Michael. And that's Michael Navarre from Farmers Insurance. I'm Jeff Barton, your voice in the mortgage industry. We'll be right back. You're listening to The Mortgage Voice with Jeff Barton. We'll be right back with more in just a moment. For questions or comments, send emails to info at malibufunding.net. Now, back to The Mortgage Voice with your host, Jeff Barton. Welcome back, everybody. I am Jeff Barton, your voice in the mortgage industry, 888-713-2929. That's the telephone number. If you pick up the phone and give us a call, we can help you through the mortgage mess that you find yourself in. Oh, my gosh, I'm going to get a house. Oh, I have no money. Oh, how do I get a loan? Well, these are kind of things we try to help people with uh, all through our listening area in the in the several stations that we're on. Uh, we're on each and every week, Saturday and Sunday. And again, it's a, a format whereby you can email me, info at malibufunding.net. You can see the show if you want to on both of the radio stations in San Bernardino and Riverside, or you can go to themortgagevoice.com or go to YouTube and just type in Jeff Barton, uh, real estate voice and you'll get the same uh, response that you'll get from the mortgagevoice.com. We have a lot of different ways that we try to communicate what we do. I have a Twitter handle, I have a blog, uh, all kinds of things. And what the main focus of it always is, is to bring information to people who need it. A lot of people don't know about mortgages or real estate or in different areas that we do business. Um, one of these areas is Las Vegas, Nevada, and I know a lot of people in this listening area want to either live there, move there, or have friends that do. Uh, so we decided to bring to the show a terrific real estate agent from uh, Keller Williams, both residential and commercial, is Alexis Young. Alexis, how are you? I'm good. Thank you for having me. And thank you for being on the show. I really do appreciate it, especially since I think what you do there in this crazy market in Las Vegas, describe it for us. Uh, what's going on out there? So our market is still hot, as everybody knows. Um, we're up to 290, 290,000 for the median uh, single family range, and um, that's a 16 percent jump from right. April. Wow! So from January, uh, we've gone up about twenty thousand dollars. Wow! So we're uh, we're not going to come down anytime soon. So we've seen a huge market of uh, California buyers coming over and about 30 percent of our buyers are from california and so i've been getting um lots and lots of people from um, the north bay area right. la san diego um just you know i think most californians uh they just can't keep up with the market trend right and you've got to make two hundred thousand dollars to afford um your monthly rent there right. for, you know, a one or two bedroom condo. So, well, I think the prices, even though they've gone up a tremendous amount in Las Vegas, are still so much cheaper than they would be in San Francisco or in Los Angeles or even San Bernardino Riverside, which are close by. Um, prices are just sure. much cheaper in Las Vegas, even though for Vegas prices, they've really shot up. They're almost at the all time high, right? Medium wise? Yes. So um, a lot of people, you know, they kind of remember the tough times, but they don't remember uh, the good times either. Right. So our interest rates are actually still pretty low. Yep. And even though our market's high, uh, it bounced back from an exceptional low. So we still have um, quite a bit to go. And, um, you know, we don't have personal tax here. We don't have corporate tax here. So that's great for your business. Right. And also, the personal property tax um, is, is just a fraction of what you're paying in California. So, what you could be getting 
um, in California versus here with the same amount of money, uh, you could really position yourself to have a really great life here in Las Vegas. Now, I know that they're really expanding a lot of uh, what they're trying to do in North Las Vegas. Some of the other pockets that slowed down during the recession have come back strong, whether it's up in Summerlin or out in Henderson. What are some of the other growth areas that people might not know or have not heard about in terms of um, uh, growth areas out in the Las Vegas area in the valley? So that's actually a really good topic to uh, point out. So right now we're doing two grant programs, if people are not aware. Um, it, they are very similar to Home is Possible, but they are slightly different. And I can send people the information okay. uh, later on so because I know we're kind of running on a tight schedule. But it's called Home at Last and Hope Brings You Home. And they touch on the northeast and north central areas that you're talking about. Right. And they're also touching on the rural outskirts of Las Vegas um, that are not near the Strip. So people um, will be more apt to buy out there as well. And the northwest is really coming along over by Sky Canyon. Yep. Huge expansion over there. Uh, we've got Henderson, Boulder City. It's really coming along as well. And even Mountain's Edge, the southwest, everything's going further out and even into the Red Rocks. So we're really expanding and we're going fast, high demand. And uh, that's pretty much why we have, you know, the high uh, prices right now right. because of the demand. I don't really feel like it's a bubble. No, I think what it is is that there's a lack of housing. And that's what's yeah. driving the prices up. It's not as if people, or maybe it is, you tell me, is it people coming from California buying, holding, and flipping, or is it just because there's not enough housing is why the prices are going up so fast? Well, I think it was a growing trend of investments. Uh, lots of investors came here and just bought up a lot of cash properties and right. were holding on to them. And uh, they're not really looking to sell right now. They're, you know, looking for a return on their investment. Um, passive income. So I think it's a little bit of that, and I think it's a little bit of other people moving out here for better opportunities. Um, this is the land of opportunity out here. Yes, it is. We, we have lots of money in a small town that's expanding. And, you know, a lot of people, they don't understand that Las Vegas, if you come out here for the right reasons, can really turn your life around. <laughs> I, I, You know what? I like Las Vegas a lot, and I like it a lot more since they got the hockey team, and I'm going to like yeah. it even more when they get the football team. How's that affecting people out there? Well, actually, you know, a lot of people, um, they don't really like how they're using the funds to build the stadium, but yeah. really... It's helping the economy, whether you Huge. like it or not. Right. With the Golden Knights, um, we didn't win the Stanley Cup, but it really brought our city together. It's amazing, it was, really. It was a huge boost for the economy. Yep. People were making money, and I mean, um, it just brings everybody together as a whole, and that's what we really needed. And now we have so many sports teams here, and um, we have the new casinos, hotels and the convention center i mean it's just never going to stop here so no, no matter what happens around the rest of the country las vegas is going to be stable let me ask you about commercial i know you do some of that do you more into leasing or purchase um i do a little bit of both so okay. it just really depends on uh what side you want to be on and if you want to make some money. <laughs> now, uh, if you're in a retail, and I don't know how retail is doing out there, is it like every other city where retail is not doing great, or is it because it's a destination city that retail still does pretty well in terms of uh, having a store on the Strip or a store on one of the avenues? Well, you have to be a little realistic with that. Right. So if you want a store on the Strip, it's going to cost you a lot of money. Yes, but it if you've got a great product, then you don't have anything to worry about. Now, if you're just looking and you have an apparel store or you sell um, purses or makeup, you could go into any normal retail center right. and you would still do it. You, you do fantastic. What's a typical rent that you're paying per square foot in these areas? Well, anywhere between... Um, if you're lucky, you can get like a dollar fifty, okay. or you can. It goes up to even three dollars or more. 
Um, but we have so many like specific areas that we could find you a good fit for you. Okay, excellent. Listen, why don't you shout out your phone number for people so that they can get a hold of you, especially since uh, your knowledge of both commercial and residential will give them a leg up if they want to move out there and open a business. Sure. My phone number is 702-704-3135. Okay. And my website... Oh, oh, go on. I'm sorry, Alexis. I didn't mean that. Sorry. It's okay. Um, And my website is Vegas Dream Homes with an S. Net. Excellent. Thank you very much. Give us one quick story about why you moved out there when you originally got there. You know, uh, so I was originally a professional dancer uh, my entire life. Uh-huh. And so I came out here to pursue my career, and I just ended up falling into real estate. And right. I've been with it ever since. Great. And I just I love it. Well, I like that about Vegas, where you can make good money and you can switch careers uh, as you've done, and obviously you're pretty successful. Alexis, thanks you very much for coming on the show. Thank you for having me. Okay, very good. And that's Alexis Young from uh, Keller Williams, both residential and commercial. I'm Jeff Barton, your voice in the mortgage industry. We'll be right back. You're listening to The Mortgage Voice with Jeff Barton. We'll be right back with more in just a moment. For questions or comments, send emails to info at malibufunding.net. Now, back to The Mortgage Voice with your host, Jeff Barton. Welcome back to the show. I'm Jeff Barton, your voice in the mortgage industry. 888-713-2929 is the telephone number. Pick up the phone. Give us a call. We are here to help you help you make decisions about what you're going to do with your real estate world this year. Um, I know properties are really expensive, and I know that it's difficult to try to wind or wend your way through the mortgage issues that you need to deal with in order to get a mortgage, in order to qualify for that house that you so desperately need, but you're in competition with you know nine other people. That is the way it is, and as I said earlier segment of the show, it's due to the competition and the lack of housing, it's not due to the fact that there's something nefarious going on and somebody owns 10 properties and all they're doing is flipping and refining every you know, six or eight months to take the equity out. That is not what's happening this time. It's a lack of housing. We dealt with it earlier in segment one. So uh, to kind of solve the issue or figure out the financing element, I wanted to bring uh, Josh back on the show, Josh Thompson from Malibu Funding. Josh, how are you? I'm great, Jeff. How are you? I'm okay. Explain a little bit about what is happening in the real estate market in terms of uh, the financing element. Is it easier? Is it harder? I mean, what's going on? Um, I mean, right now, I, I do a lot of business in L.A. County and, and all of California, but it's uh, it's getting kind of tight right now. Uh, mm-hmm. Interest rates are going up, Yep. Um, and I think there's a couple more rate hikes scheduled for this year. Yep. And, Wednesday, you know, tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, and and the the crazy thing is, I mean, we're not theoretically, you know, hopefully we'll see values drop when interest rates go up. But, you know, California, there's such a low inventory, we haven't been seeing that yet. I think I just got the numbers um and you know, for May 27, 2018, prices are have still gone up from where they were about a year ago. Right. So, I know, agree. with interest rates with interest rates going up, it's making it really hard for people to even qualify because of, you know, debt to income, you know, yep. rules and all all sorts of things like that. But do you see Josh, do you see discouragement among buyers? I mean, you you're uh quite a bit younger than I am. Uh, better looking too, but regardless of that, I mean, do you think the younger demographic uh, uh, is getting somewhat discouraged? I mean, people my age either own a house or you know they're in a nursing home. That's how old I am. So, uh, what are your feelings on you know millennials or or the people who are young uh, below forty years old uh, or new people getting good paying jobs but just can't seem to get into the um, housing market? Are they discouraged? I think mean, yeah, somewhat. There's a there's a couple of uh, there's a couple of you know young people I'm actually working with now, first time mm-hmm. home buyers, and yeah, I mean they're they're when you're moving from you know paying you know twenty five hundred a month or whatever what have you for your rent, you know they're looking for a mortgage payment that's comparable to that, and you know there's it's tough right now, you know yeah. based on the the prices, and then a lot of first time home buyers they don't have the full down payment, so we're either doing FHA. Uh, some sometimes even Cal HFA, which is a down payment assistance program for right. California, 
And I mean, your mortgage payment is is going to be higher with those because you're financing most of the the loan amount. I mean, right. the sales price. So, right. um, yeah, I see some frustration, but uh, I also see a lot of determination with them. I mean, home ownership is still a dream, you know, for for everyone. I, I tell a lot of young clients, you know, go ahead and buy that four unit or that duplex. Yep, I agree. So you, yeah, so you can have, you know, the rent from the other units, you know, going towards your mortgage, and then you can actually get closer to a comparable out-of-pocket payment that you were paying for your rent. So. Well, I was telling uh, on an earlier segment uh, the audience, the listening audience, about how much the equity in your home has grown. Just last year, it grew by $544 billion. That's in all homes in the U.S. That's what the equity increased. So if you're buying a home, it's probably the best investment, regardless of what market you're getting into. Oh, yeah. True indeed. True indeed. Uh, yeah, I, I, I would agree with that. I mean, the home ownership, I mean, real estate is like the biggest, um, what is it, uh, you know, contributing factor to wealth that yep. you know, that's, that's out there. So, I mean, you, you have to jump in at some point. Um, you know, and it's good to make a nice down payment if you can, you know, just to make sure you, you're protected and whichever way the market goes. But that's even right. if the market goes down for a short period of time, the, the numbers always come back up. So, Well, that's the other interesting point here. Uh, prices going up, as I said earlier, probably due to a lack of housing rather than some other scheme out there, whether it's easy money or no-doc loans or signature, you know, like heartbeat loans. I think this one is much more about lack of product if we had you know the number of homes that are needed we would have a much more balanced market but we just don't have that and solving that problem is one of the issues facing you know what what we're trying to do i think the ease of credit would help uh where do you see the ease of credit or the newer programs do you see them out there oh yeah there are there's still some newer programs coming out but you know, the, the Dodd-Frank reform didn't really cut too many regulations. There's still a lot nope. of regulations on the mortgage industry. It wasn't that, probably. right. The front yeah. end of the mortgage is, is really tough. You know? yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. they're really looking at everything. They're looking at under every rock, which, which they should. And I'm not saying they shouldn't. But it does prevent a lot of qualified borrowers from getting um, uh QM loans. So it pushes them into a higher interest rate, which then prices them out of the market from a mortgage standpoint. Yeah. And, and I, I mean, honestly, I think the real problem is uh, the, the, like you say, the lack of housing. Right. And I think there needs to be something altered with the, you know, the general plan or the community plan in regards to zoning. I think we need, uh, I agree. you know, more, more, you know, more units built. I think more houses built. And I think a lot of these regulations on building, uh, you know, code needs to kind of come down, and I think it, it needs to be reassessed. I just went to the uh, L.A. Tenants Union meeting last night okay. uh, out here in Hollywood, and I was hearing a lot of the concerns, you know, from a tenant aspect, but from an owner aspect, it's, you know, and a developer aspect, um, you know, there's, they, there's so many things that developers are trying to do to create more housing, but there's a ton of plethora of tenants that are just doing everything they can to kind of, uh, you know, put a stop to that, so... There's always a lawsuit out there for every developer developer there is that wants to do something in terms of the housing. There's, you know, lawsuits. I mean, I heard some ridiculous uh, estimates as to how long it takes a developer to develop a project. I mean, up to 10 years. I'm like, who's got that kind of staying power, let alone the will to do it? Oh, forget it. There's a project project I'm actually working on, and it's a small residential project, and I've been trying to get it entitled for about three years now. Right. Yeah, it's it's tough. No, I I agree with you. And I think what the problem with a lot of that is the streamlining you can't really do because each city has their own uh, building and safety, their own codes, their own, you know. So it's not as if you can have an edict from the state of California that says, okay, this is how we're going to do building because each city makes up their own laws. So it's very difficult in a city that already thinks it's got too many people or the too many of the right kind of people. They don't want to have, they don't want to have open up the, the housing market and build big development. Happened where I live uh, 20 years ago and it's still going on today. Yeah. Yeah, man, it's, it's tough. And there's a there's there's a lot of the conflicting information out there. I see from a there's a bureau of SCAG, Southern uh-huh. California Association of Governments uh, has projections saying that by the year 2040, there's going to be another two million people in the city of Los Angeles alone. Um, Where are they going to you know, live? 
Exactly. I guess at your house. (laughs) (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) We're making coffee. Come on over. (laughs) Jeez. I know it's really a a spectacular problem. Not sure really how it's, it's to be solved. But what it does say is that the demand on housing, the lack of housing, is why the prices are going up. So if you think they're going to go down anytime soon, I don't know if that happens unless there's some catastrophic economic event. And I don't really foresee one in the near future. Yeah, because I don't really see a, a cause for one. How you know right. how the bad mortgages were the cause of the last one. Um, you know, right now I don't. I typically don't see too many bad loans getting through. So I don't right. really see something making everything go bust. I think it's a more comprehensive problem that needs to be looked at from all aspects. I agree. Um, you know, and, and a lot of different people and different interests need to kind of sit down and have some sort of a conversation together to be able to create a, a, you know, a reality that suits all sides, you know, so. Hey, listen, Josh, could you shout out your phone number for the listening audience so that they can get in touch with you um, if they want a great mortgage loan officer? Oh, yes, yes. My phone number is uh, 323-945-5694. Excellent. Thank you very much. And, Josh, once again, I really appreciate you coming on the show, educating, illuminating, and uh, illustrating everything that we talk about in mortgages. I mean, it can just go on forever, but I really appreciate it. Awesome, man, and I appreciate you uh, having me anytime, Jeff. Great. Thanks very much. And that's Josh Thompson from Malibu Funding. I'm Jeff Barton, your voice in the mortgage industry. We'll be right back. You're listening to The Mortgage Voice with Jeff Barton. We'll be right back with more in just a moment. For questions or comments, send emails to info at malibufunding.net. Now, back to The Mortgage Voice with your host, Jeff Barton. Welcome back, everybody. I'm Jeff Barton, your voice in the mortgage industry, 888-713-2929. That's the telephone number over here. If you give us a call, we can talk to you about your mortgage, your mortgage needs, real estate, your real estate needs. Listen, if you've got a business that you want to relocate, yeah, we can help you with that too. Uh, There are a number of companies out there, loan companies, who are giving business loans right now. Uh, We don't do that, but I do know some people that do do that, and they're doing it based on your TIN number, your corporate Uh, returns, maybe your bank statements from the company. And uh, these loans, now we had a guy on the show a couple of weeks ago, Reed Blake from Business Capital Experts, and uh, his company is doing really well by doing exactly that, looking at your business, looking at your track record, and being able to lend money on you and on your business. And uh, for a lot of people, in order to grow, you have to hire new people, you have to uh, get new equipment. I know right now, for instance, I'm doing some software improvements at my own company, and the the cost of software is incredible. Now, um, the the quote I was given was, uh, the implementation was $37,000. Uh, and now that's a big check for a small company. I'm sorry. Maybe for a big company, it's it's a drop in the bucket. But for some company that's making you know a couple hundred thousand dollars a year to drop 25, 30 percent of what you're trying to make each year on just software in order to improve your efficiencies or improve your compliance, well, that's a big number. But we are doing it. And in order to do that for a lot of companies, they just don't have the money in the bank. So business equity loans are a big deal. Blake is uh, on the show a lot, and he is also available at Business Capital Experts. So if you're out there right now and you need that kind of capital uh, infusion into your business, uh, look him up online and you can definitely give him a call and say Jeff Barton sent you. Um, Okay, so the article Jan Swanson was talking about uh, that I was talking about, that she was writing in, in regards to what was going on with equity in your home, uh, the growth of equity in your home from 2017 till today, which is almost to the middle of two. Can you imagine, Daryl? Can you imagine? We're almost at halfway point of 2018. It is just flying by. I mean, it, what is the? Is it's it crazy. always like that, or is it just? No, no. I think the thing is, is, is. Uh, Days, months, and years go on. It just winds up like a top. It it just spins faster and faster. Well, I think that there are so many things worldwide that take you know precedent over what we do in my little world of mortgages. However, the dizzying, um, uh, I guess, rate of what uh, the president does and how he handles his business really catches people up in this whirlwind that you're talking about. And I think when they take a breath and look around, they go, "Oh my gosh, what happened to that year?" And I think. In that regard, I 100% agree with you. I know that in my own business, either I'm spending money on new software or trying to develop new products, but in terms of the demand for product, it's never been higher, and people need now more than ever 
cheap mortgages, which are not as cheap as they were, but they need product in the mortgage, I mean, in the uh, housing market in order to be able to, you know, get a mortgage, get a house, uh, start a family. It's just not happening. So I, the pressure on what we're doing here at, you know, the Mortgage Voice in order to supply information is really, we sound like a broken record. And maybe that's because that's just the, the nature of time moves quickly. We don't have the answers. I can't build houses. Can you? No, I, I wouldn't even attempt it. It's just really, I mean, the whole idea, and I'm going to read a part of uh, Jan's article here, which really speaks to all of this. It talked about first part of the article about how we fixed the mortgages, i.e., and I've said it many times on the show, the front end, the origination, people who give you W-2s or prove their income or have credit, who fill out the applications correctly, who go through step one through six to get a loan estimate to be able to prove that they can repay the loan and the uh, ability to repay rule. All of these Dodd-Frank regulations have tightened the front end of the mortgage. And what that really means is that mortgages in general, it's the lowest default rate that it has ever been. In terms of serious delinquency, it's below 2%. It's like 1.36% uh, are seriously delinquent, and that means 90 days late on your loan. And it has never been like that. But Jan points to the fact we don't have the housing necessary to solve the problem. It's simple. And she writes, first, To boost the supply of housing, there should be a closer look at how land development and zoning regulations are distinctively, uh, I'm sorry, disincentivizing new home construction. It can take years for builders to get permits. Well, this is what I was saying in the section, uh, in the earlier segment with Josh. I was saying, look, if it takes you as a builder 10 years, you know, several lawsuits, and you, at the end of the day, you're looking at shrinking margins because every day of delay, every day of waiting for permits, every day of a new lawsuit costs money. And this money has to get passed on to the consumer when the actual project gets developed. I have a friend, and I'm not kidding. He lives in Poughkeepsie, New York. He's a developer. He's been on one particular project for 20 years. Everybody in and, and Poughkeepsie, New York, I don't know if anybody knows Poughkeepsie, New York. It is not the hotbed of expansion or any anything close to resort or high-end living. These are modest homes that he's trying to build. He started with, I think it was 61. They got him down to 24. He dropped the project. He revived it when he could get upwards to 40. I mean, it's one of these things where as soon as he gets close, as soon as he gets a partial approval either through the planning department or he gets his permit and building and safety stops him because there's a lawsuit based on something else, uh, he, he gets stopped by a neighbor. And those neighbors just don't want to see development. So if you're out there and you're not in my backyard kind of person, you have to think Overall, how are your kids or grandkids going to get a home? How is it going to happen? Where are they going to live? I know a lot of people look at at places outside their immediate area and say, oh, I've never lived there. And then 20 years later, there's a housing development there. Well, that's what has to happen if people want to be able to get a home. Because expansion in the housing market means really expansion of where houses are being built. Personally, I'd like to see a condensed denser version. I'd like to see some higher density stuff being built in a lot of the metropolitan areas so we can take advantage of public uh, transportation. Uh, We can not hurt the environment by spreading the footprint of whatever it is we're doing to a wider and wider area. In most of the areas that the show is being broadcast, it's desert. Let's face it, it's California. The whole thing's desert. But in these areas of San Bernardino, in Riverside, in Lake Tahoe, in uh, East Los Angeles County, in Northern Orange County, if you go up the corridor into Las Vegas or up to Tahoe, all of these desert areas mean that if we have more of a denser population, we do not affect those desert areas which everybody wants to protect. Everybody who I talk to that doesn't want anything to do with large-scale development is even against denser development in close. So again, where are your kids going to live? Where are your grandkids going to live? What are we going to do about the development of the future if we do not have housing? What What we have right now is an expansion of 
homelessness and people who don't have houses that are forced to either live in their car or drive around in a Winnebago. You've seen them. They park along a lot of streets in major cities right now, and nobody likes that. But if we don't have housing that is affordable in order to have people be able to live there, what are we supposed to do with people who move to Los Angeles or move to San Bernardino or Riverside or Tahoe or Vegas or any number of cities who are experiencing this kind of problem. It's a universal problem because what we have again and again and again is lack of housing, and that lack of housing is causing both a rise in prices rapidly as well as people living on the streets. That's just the way it is. Anyway, Daryl, one other, one other question I want to ask you. Yes, sir. We have housing... Uh, rentals that have gone down in six different cities. Quickly, I know we have a, a minute left. Yep, gone down. Name the, t- name the top five cities where rental properties have actually gone down in price this year. Um, I'll, I'll say Las Vegas. Not Las Vegas. No. No, uh, it would be uh, the number one is in Portland, Oregon. Really? Portland's yep. a nice town. Portland's great. City of the Roses. And you know cool. why it's gone down? The number one reason? They built more houses. So all the <laughs> rentals went down. All the prices up there went down. Wow. I don't know what Portland's doing, but I think it's it's pretty good. It's uh, a pretty place. Pittsburgh, Portland, Seattle, St. Louis, Baltimore, and Chicago. Those are the cities that all the prices for rentals went down. Interesting. Yes, very interesting. Thanks for jumping in, Daryl. I'm Jeff Barton. I really appreciate you listening to the show once again this week, and we'll see you next time. This is The Mortgage Voice. You're listening to The Mortgage Voice with Jeff Barton. For more on today's topic, visit www.malibufunding.net. 